Hello, my absolutely beautiful astrology soulmates. It's me, Stormy Grace. And in this video, we're going to talk about this Mars-Pluto conjunction and where you might not be showing up as your best self, but also some really nice opportunities to transform within that. Now, if we haven't met before, I'm practicing professional astrologer Stormy Grace. I'm an evolutionary and a humanistic astrologer. So I help you understand what the soul story is and then what you do with it as a human being. <laughs> And we translate all of that into you having a wonderful use and access to the language of astrology so that you can use it in your own life. And the times that we are in right now under this Pluto-Mars conjunction that is happening and the way it is stirring up energy is something you really want to be leaning into because we are dealing with a sp very specific pain point for each of us. Now, if you haven't checked out my weekly video where we covered the whole landscape of the week, including when Venus comes into contact with Pluto, make sure that you check that out. I will put it in the description box down below and at the end of this video as well. Now, I would also love to have you be able to speak this language of astrology, not just into your own life, but into the world if that's what you're ready for. So come and join me over on my website at stormygrace.com and sign up for the Knowledge to Fluency class. It is six weeks of chart interpretation. If you've got the planet signs, houses, and aspects down, but you're not sure how to put it all together, to form your own conversation, be in the conversation astrologically, that is exactly 100% the class for you. So come on over and join me. And I do know that there are a few of you out there, I know because you've told me, who are feeling the pain point of actually needing to share your craft, needing to share your journey um, and help people. And you're really afraid, Pluto, right? Like what a Plutonian thing to come out on YouTube and do it. And I get it. I have been there. I have been you. I have been afraid to come out. Mars is also pushing on you right now to do the thing. And so if that is also you, come and join me in my YouTube Breakthrough Challenge where I will show you how to YouTube. We're going to spend five classes together. You're going to leave with YouTube knowledge, the tricks, the hacks with the algorithm, all of it. And you're going to leave with your first most beautiful, ready to go, serve the people, give your craft YouTube video. So if that is honestly you, if that's a pain point for you, if you've been sitting around saying, I'm going to start a YouTube channel, if you've been doing any of that kind of stuff, or you feel like you don't know how to do it, come and join me. All right, let's go. We are going to talk about this conjunction because it's important. First of all, when Mars and Pluto are coming together, we have these two archetypal energies of Mars, the action, and there's war and there's doing, but it's focused. I'm going right at what I'm trying to do. So there is an abundance of energy coming together and it is inflamed. It is inflamed, whether it is inflamed because I'm ready to transform or it's inflamed here because I'm getting pushed on, right? Whatever the, the energy is here of Mars, it is looking to focus that energy in a forward motion because Mars wants to go. That's what the symbolism of the glyph of Mars is. It's the circle with the arrow pointing exactly where it wants to go. So as we drop this down into our own energies, embody this, like bring it into your body. Where are you feeling it? Like you have this sense of I'm ready to go. Okay. And it's that Martian energy ready to go forward. Now Mars is in Aquarius. So it's of the mind my thoughts, my ideas, my intelligence, my community, my social world around me, these are things being absolutely pressed on at this particular time in that Aquarian vibration. But it also means that my thinking, my ideas that have been fixed, they have been here for a very long time. Aquarius is a fixed energy. I've had this, this has dominated my life. This thinking has dominated the way that I do things, the way that I speak about things, right? they're being inflamed. So here, as we're connecting today, hopefully by the time you're seeing this, it's Valentine's Day, which is my favorite day of the year. And <laughs> you are feeling it. You are feeling that Martian intensity within you. And it is challenging vibrationally your thinking, right? It is challenging your society ideas, maybe even just your society in general. You're feeling a pressure in some way. Now, when we look to the Pluto, um, archetype. I want to say too, that I don't teach that any of the planets need to be feared. So this is not a fear-based review of how effed up Pluto is, okay? Pluto is about the death 
the destruction. It is a planet. We have to have that. We have to have things go. We engage with things. We enjoy them. We're a part of them in our lives. And then they need to transition where they need to go next. That is important for all of us to understand. And it's nice when we talk about Pluto and it's like, there's going to be this phoenixing energy, this transformation, and you'll become the butterfly that you're supposed to be next. It is. And I love that. I have a lot of Venus in my chart. I want to tell you the nice story. But these two energies together are primal. And we have to remember that Pluto, just like the process of being born where we're welcoming this new life, is also the process of dying. And it is a process on the journey to whatever is dying in you. And it's painful. It is painful, right? So when we're dealing with that Plutonian energy, hold it, bring it into your body, bring it into your space in your own journey, what is it? You know it. You can feel it. It is dying off. And in Aquarius, it is an idea. It's an old idea. And it is an old structure. It is an old belief. It's an old, the way that you fit into your world, it's dying off. And and the mind letting go of an idea can sometimes be the most painful thing. The other thing in Aquarius, because it's so much in the head and the way humans are made, I get a story going in my mind. And like, this is the story. And if you come and break my story or you break my delusion of what that story has been holding for me, my ego is going to get hurt. And that is one of the most painful things for human beings. No, right? Like we don't like that because my ego is going to rise up and protect that story. Even if my finances are in the absolute trash, something in my intellectual story in my head guarded by my ego is going to say, no, it'll just get better in a few months if I just do better, if I just be better. But as Mars and Pluto are here in this conjunction, they are bringing the inflammation around your pain point topic that your ego has been like this guardian to protect and you cannot protect it and you cannot deny it anymore. So whatever is happening 13th, 14th, 15th, all the way until we get to next week, I want to discuss the fact that the energy is intense. We're feeling it through and through because there is inflammation to the honest revelation of the death of an idea of a belief structure around us that is dying. It is dying how we fit into society, the societies that we fit into, it's dying off. And it is intense. It is intense. It is incredibly intense. It is powerful. There is passion. There is obsession. There is jealousy. There is a power struggle that exists around this energy. And one of the things it can do, and you think about it, if if I have an idea of what something is, or the better way I think to explain this is if you push in on my pain point and you scare me enough, or the idea of if my finances always look like this, if my relationship always looks like this, if I've, if I've kind of had my energetic claws into something and you take it from me, I'm going to get selfish and afraid and that inflammation is going to get bigger even if I don't bring it out into the world it's going to light up my entire being with a powerful energy of fear and here is where I get the opportunity to f everything and run and it is all your fault it is all their fault society's fucked up you know like we're gonna be doing all of that or I'm gonna recover I'm gonna go okay hold on this is like killing me from the inside out. I'm afraid. I don't know what to do. This energy is dominating me. I am inflamed and I have got to find a portal out. I've got to find an action out. And that is going to be to the people, places, and things who can help me relearn this area or learn a different structure, get different ideas, right? But I think what's really powerful as this conjunction is happening as well as just beyond the way, Mercury has been traveling here. So what each of us know on this day is that Mercury left you information. It left us this cosmic new information that was like, you're not going to outthink this. But there is, if you'll tell the truth, say it out loud, say what's hurting you, right? Don't revert to the violence. Don't revert to the manipulation. Don't go in your office and think obsessively about this is what I'm going to do to get my business going. I'm going to fix my money. Oh my God, I can't fix my money. This is what's going on in my relationship. Being nasty in your relationships. Does your partner think that you're being unkind? Where are you being a jerk in your life right now? 
Are you pouring out some poison on the kids, on the family, at work? Are you the person coming in to work and everybody's stupid and they don't want you there? Where is your bad behavior? And it's coming out of that obsessive fear. Well, Mercury has said, say it out loud. Tell the truth about the pain point because the group, the teacher, the helper is right here waiting for you. Take that step. And it may, and it may. It may come out as a warring statement where you're like, I'm scared, right? It can come out just like that. Now, I want to just say here too, when we pan out a bit into the mundane energy, because Pluto is our outest (laughs) planet. So our societies as a whole are feeling the inflammation of this as well. So there is this vibration that none of us can ignore that is in the air, right now. And we can even see it, right? We're seeing war. We're seeing more dominant, more aggressive energy. We're seeing relationships, even people as they are engaging, there is a deep intensity. And the warring may look like you're seeing more people enter into affairs. You're seeing more people go for its passion and its lust versus deep transformation that comes with commitment. You're seeing this, right? I really believe that in the astrology, consulting, and coaching industry, just in general, We are going to see a lot of people quit. We are going to see a lot of people leave. And some will be because they've made all the money they wish to make this way. And the others are going to be because they don't have business structures set up enough to support them. So they're burning out. They are realizing that in the deep commitment of things, they're not prepared. They're not ready. So that money's not flowing. The burnout's happening. There's lots of sadness, right? And they're not prepared to innovate and let the death of the ego happen, right? And so take this into your own life. Where are you seeing this in your communities that the the warring is happening? But also where I'd like you to zoom in a bit more, because I think we've got some real potential here to choose the transformation. Aquarius is an innovative energy. And this is where you have to be gently ruthless with where you are willing to recover, innovate, go the different direction based on your pain point. And this is where we can ultimately be of the most delicious service to one another as well, right? People are out here building these programs, sharing their skills because they understand your pain point. You understand a pain point How can you teach it to someone else? And it literally relieves you. Take some of that inflammation down. Service is the anti-inflammatory diet that we all have access to right now. But where I want to just bring your attention as we're going to jump into looking at this for each of the signs is one, where is your bad behavior right now? Like do not sugarcoat this. Don't sugarcoat this with me, right? Like where are you being a jerk? Where are you being afraid in your life? Because whatever word we put for being a a bad word, being a (laughs) beep, 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 being any of those things, you know, if people are literally saying that to you out in your life, where are you afraid on the inside? And it just feels like this inflammation is just powerful or it's like, I'm so passionate about this thing, but I can't get it going, right? It's this inflamed vibration. And a lot of it is pulsing through the head as well. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. I can't even sit still and watch this show. I can't be in the world world without thinking, thinking, thinking. Where is that for you? This is a pain point of fear. It is a pain point that the ego, that this thought process, that this old idea that you have is dying off. You cannot ignore it. You have to be gently ruthless with your willingness to transform here. So I want you to identify first, where is your crappy behavior showing up right now? Now, the other side of this Plutonian aspect is that, and with Mars here as well, but Pluto is about the regeneration, but I cannot regenerate until I die. I cannot regenerate until it dies off. And just like growing that baby, growing that fruit, growing that garden, it takes time to grow the thing, but we are going to take time to dye the thing as well. Okay. So the regeneration is here as well. Your transformation is on the other side, but not until you tell the truth about where this nasty, bad behavior is at. So let's take a minute here and we are going to jump in and we are going to look at this. I would really love for you to listen to it by particular house, just in case you use a different housing system than whole sign. Uh, But you can, in the timestamps, just look at for your sun or your rising sign as well. And I want to say this, I want to say this. 
people ask all the time, should I listen for my sun, my moon, or my rising? I'm going to tell you, when someone, an astrologer, is creating a general reading, it doesn't matter which one you listen for. It really doesn't because everything gets moved to the first house to create a general reading. Now, it is easier to perhaps listen for your rising sign if you're going to use whole sign to calculate your charts going forward, because then naturally the rising sign will align exactly with your chart. But if you're using Placidus or you're using something else where the housing system is not divided into equals, it's going to be a little bit different. You can listen for your rising sign. It is the easiest. I prefer to share these with you by sun sign because I believe that every sun sign gets the vibration of what is going on. So you choose for you, but that's also why I break it down by house. So you can just go into your own chart and say, this is what's happening in this house of my chart, no matter which style I use. Okay. And remember, we're going to talk about what's happening right now. The death and the rebirth are happening, but we're going to see Mars and Pluto come together again at three degrees of Aquarius, January 27th, 2026. And at that time, I think that you're able to go, holy crap, looking back to 2024, I died and I came back because your deep death is the ticket. It is the price of admission to your new life. All right, so let's jump in here. We're going to talk about this by house and we're going to talk about it by our, by where the bad behavior is and then we're also going to talk about where there's some transformation available okay so here in the first house the conjunction can bring an intensity where you feel like i need to um overly assert myself or i'm becoming obsessed i'm obsessing i am you know i've got this jealousy going in something about how i look my personal identity my personal um appearance there can be you know and you know your pain point it is like i am heavy on the self-criticism right now i am have this just preoccupation with how I look or what people think of me, my identity. I feel like I'm in a position I'm afraid, so I'm dominating over people or I'm asserting dominance or where I'm going, how I'm engaging with people from the inside to the outside is just one big power struggle. So only you know your pain point, so you have to sort out if you've got bad behavior in that realm. Now, the transformation is, yeah, we, we want to have this drive to assert yourself where we need to assert ourselves, right? You want to have this, there's this opportunity to transform and be empowered in your identity by likely identifying that it's like, yeah, these are my new goals. This is where I want to take myself. This is what I want my physical body to look like. This is what I want my aesthetic to look like. And I'm going to put myself in my own lane and be working on that. So you have lots of transformation available in that first house. But what's your bad behavior as well? Okay, in the second house, this is finances. This is what's going on in your money. This up obsession of material possession or financial um, security. So we can have some really dark behavior, some really obsessive behaviors that develop here. First of all, it's like I'm doing anything and everything to get money to earn money, to bring money in some way. I've got power plays. I'm using manipulation in some way around money. And remember, this can be very, very mental. It doesn't mean that you necessarily go out in the world and actually do it. But what's going on in your head? How, is there a manipulation dance about how can I just get this money? How can, how can I make that money, right? And, and this dominance, like finance is constantly in your mind, constantly in your thinking, which means it is owning your behind. This is a dominant thought, okay? Now, the transformation that's available here is, first of all, what is your personal value around money? How do you regard and value money? How do you regard and value your personal um, self-worth and how you charge money for what you do, right? How do you regard financial and material things in your life? This is going to be important for you to have that drive, point that drive and that inflammation at taking control of your finances. And maybe you need to be taught exactly how to do that, pursuing any opportunity for financial growth that is you staying in your lane and learning how to transform your own financial or your self-worth, maybe your money mindset, 
understandings. And and really, though, the deepening of understanding your self-worth and your values and then setting your own bar will be a game changer. Okay, third house. Oh, man. All right. This is going to be about I'm, I'm obsessively thinking about thinking. I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about like over and over and over and over and over again. I'm thinking about that book. I'm thinking about my siblings. I'm thinking about how I communicate. I'm thinking about that thing they said that one time. And this is a real third house kind of thing where it's like, you know, you're thinking about you're replaying a conversation from like back in the day, right? This can be a real whole deal and it's obsessive. Now, the other thing is um, using communication as a power structure and a manipulation tactic. This can be, and I want you to think about this. Are you doing this in your life? Think about it. (laughs) You're already thinking about things. Think about this. Are you using verbal Um, verbal aggression, verbal manipulation, right? Now, I like to say too, never underestimate the power of body language. When you walk into a room, what are you demanding from other people as opposed to commanding because you're holding your own energetic communication vibration? Now, of course, power struggles with siblings, this intense, it's like this intense um, power struggle over ideas, over opinions, over how we should get things done, about what it means, who should have this and that. Now, remember, there is transformation available here. So literally transforming the way that you communicate. So getting a, getting a hold of your breath, I think, is a really important understanding of this is like, as you're communicating, is there any room for breath? Are you breathing? Or are you just in reaction zone? Somebody says something and you're on a reaction, you're not on a, you know, a proactive response, right? So getting a hold of your breath, asserting yourself and communicating clearly, directly to the question that was asked, not from what not, not what from the old story is. We have to transform from this. You asked me this question and it's I'm not responding from the trigger from way back over here, right? Mental drive, mental discipline. This is where transformation can come and it will immediately impact the way that you communicate, the way that you think, and the way that you breathe. So you may have tons of that. And this will include too, how do you communicate in public? Would you like to be known as a different kind of communicator? Because that's going to be on the table. All right, fourth house, some of this bad behavior is at home. It is at home. Are you being a tornado or a monster in your home? And if you're thinking that that just means you're being abusive, you're doing these other things, those are the darker expressions that absolutely Mars and Pluto can bring to the table and bring revelation. You know, if you're out there putting hands on people, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be an issue to be looked at. But also, are you an emotional monster in your home? Are you grouchy? Are you grumpy so that the people around you are having to walk on eggshells? What are you doing in the emotional security? Are you providing emotional security for the people in your home, your domestic life? Do you have your own emotional security? Are you harboring resentments? You're engaging in the internal, the external, the mental power struggles of things at home, in your family unit, um, with your parents? Is there obsessive and controlling dominant behavior in your domestic zone? Are you keeping secrets in your home? These are all going to be dark expressions of this bad behavior, emotional control, and, and very much so like it's divisive. It is not good behavior. Okay. Now the transformation to this is yes, the struggles with the family can be there. The pain point gets risen to your surface. You can't deny that it's there, but there is transformation going in looking at, yes, I need to have assertion and some kind of dominance over my domestic sphere. But first of all, what is it? How I show up in it, where my domestic insides from the inside outs, my emotional, spiritual, psychological foundations need tending to because I'm out of whack. The world is kicking my butt. I'm being thrown around this house. And because I don't feel safe and secure and grounded, I'm spilling that out onto the rest of the people in my life. Life, in my building, I'm in another fight with a neighbor. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So if the bad behavior is showing up, the transformation is to get your own foundation sorted. Now, this can be very practical as well. You know, do you just need to get the foundation of your house poured and you're having to be a little bit more assertive with these builders? And you're like, no, listen, 
you have said that it was going to be done at this time and it needs to be done. And there is a difference between the assertion and the aggression. But I also think that that deep emotional internal setting, getting that right so that the people around you in your home, including you, (laughs) don't have to walk on eggshells with you. And some of this may be that you're even looking deeply into your ancestral family line to be like, where is this even coming from? Okay. All right, fifth house friends, here we go. The bad behavior is an obsession with romance, with pleasure. There should be more of it. I deserve more of it, but it is not coming from that healthy place. It is coming from, um, you know, it has to be this way because of me. Like, I, like, it's so luxurious, right? There's a lot of jealousy that can come with this jealous thinking. Why are those artists making more than me? Why is it that I'm doing this and they're getting that, right? This can be coveting someone else's romantic life. This can be coveting someone else's, you have this just, this jealous end where you're willing to manipulate to get the attention that you want. You know, is your online dating profile for photo current as you're out, you're dating, you're enjoying love, you're enjoying play, you're enjoying romance. Is it genuine? Is that who you are? Are you showing up as a chameleon in your pleasure life? But then when people get behind the surface with you, they're going to find out that that's not who you are. That's not, you can't hold it down. That was fun, but that's really not who you are. Now, also, I want to say too is there this obsession with the particular like romantic vision or fantasy that is happening here where it's like no my my prince or princess charming is going to be this and they have to look like this and they have to look like and it's like an obsession you're not thinking about it you're not calling in the qualities of I want someone to love me for who I am I want to experience humility and growth and depth it's just I want you to look like this I want you to be like that I want you to I'm, I'm I want to coerce you into being what I think you need to be now this can also be said in the fifth house around doing this to children as well. If you've got manipulation tactics going with children, this will be a pain point. You know, what's going on in that in that household area? Are you screaming all the time? Are you at the top of your lungs all the time with these children? If this is where the pain point is at, you're not going to be able to ignore it. Now, in the fifth house, the transformation is here. First of all, the way that we creatively express, the way that we are passionate about the things we do want to call in, there is a drive for understanding this, getting this into alignment. It's powerful. It's intense. You know, start listening to content of how to channel your passion, how to be a parent. Having children doesn't mean that any one of us knows how to be a parent. Parenting classes go to the place where the skill is teaching you to have structure, have dominance, have assertion, but also in the means of having joy in your home, right? If what you're applying is not working and it's bringing up bad behavior and you're running around like a maniac, let's get some training in here. That is a powerful transformative place. But this is also really powerful in what you're trying to attract or call in or what you believe that love and romance can and needs to look like for you. But there has to be this assertive movement towards, you know, one, understanding that dating and romance and these kinds of things are really just a skill. If not, they get left at lust and they get left left, left at something that will be short term. So I want to say this as well. If you're a fifth house person and the romantic thing is really a struggle for you, this is a powerful transit for you to figure out what love is to you. What is love, especially in terms of partnership? Like what is love? Because if love is, it has to be passionate and we're just doing it all the time. And it's, if it's this, right, you need a new partner every couple months to keep that lust, the passion and the fire going. And if that's, what's true for you, that's okay, but let's get clear. But if love for you is something different, if it is something other than that, then you're going to want to learn this skill and get it on board and let somebody teach you. Okay, let's move to the sixth house the house of daily routines, uh, health and wellness. Are you eating like crap? Are you eating like crap? When was your last workout? Honest workout, right? What's going on with your cholesterol? What's going on with your blood pressure? Uh, What's going on with your work schedule? Are you in workaholic mode? Have you built something? Do you have something in your life where there is 
absolutely only that. You know, I think YouTube's a fantastic example or any business really can be. But if, if it's all YouTube content all the time, all I can do is make content. I'm always behind. There's never a time to actually put it down. Know you've done enough, right? And if this is whatever your work is, your daily routine, if it's an obsession with things being only a certain way and it's got some workaholism behind it, is this your bad behavior? Um, are you sacrificing your well-being in order to do the work, to advance the career, to, right? Are you sacrificing your well-being in exercising where you're exercising to the point of sickness? Are you not exercising to the point that that is literally your sickness? Are you substituting um, a medication or something else like that because you don't want to eat right and do the exercise? Like where is the poor behavior? There is a power struggle. Now at work, the power struggle with colleagues, what is this looking like because what the fear of that can bring the manipulation the course of tactics the control do you feel like you have control of your daily routine if i stopped you right now and said what do you do on a daily basis to be your best self can you answer that and know that you are disciplined and sticking to it right because what's the old idea there's some old ideas in here either way the ism <laughs> the the i i i i i i i i and me and it's not going very well is going to start to present itself. But the transformation that's available here is, first of all, an assertiveness to transform into healthy work habits, health habits, daily routine habits. And for some people, care habits. If you're a caretaker of, let's say, your taxes, your books, your business books, your financial books, right? Are you taking care of those? Okay, so bring some healthy habits, maybe needing to be taught that. Are you caring for a parent, a sick animal, something like that? What does a healthy routine look like for you guys? Bringing that in, standing up and asserting, inserting yourself, asserting yourself in your workplace. This is highly transformative. Now, <laughs> standing up and aggressing for yourself in the workplace is going to have some people fired. It just will, or you're going to not be able to advance, right? But the assertiveness and learning that, that Pluto's a process, okay? Now, you may also, in that intense power struggle, where can you, old idea, transform to see maybe where that coworker or whether that client or where that personal trainer or that doctor is actually presenting you good information? and you can begin the journey of the transformation right there. Seventh house, conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships, obsessive relationships in partnerships. Let me put my coffee over here. <laughs> I feel like my hands are going to get going. Okay, obsessive behavior or obsessive thoughts around partnerships. Control, control, dominance within our conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships. Now I want you to think of my marriage, my committed relationships, my relationship with a higher power where I think I'm going to tell the universe what it's going to do, right? That's very good. Um, what about the relationship with myself? Me, myself, and I, this is a conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationship. And if it's not, there is definitely a power struggle probably going on in there, right? What about my business partner? What about my open enemies? Somebody I know I'm going to court with. Maybe I've got a child support case. Where am I showing up in my one-on-one -on -one relationships with these behaviors of manipulation, emotional blackmail, right? And it's not nice. It's not fun. But when we're dealing with Pluto, we're looking at the bullshit you're doing, okay? So uh, engaging, purposely engaging in a power struggle, purposely showing up to the fight because I want to prove that I'm right. And I, wanna, I, want, I want the chaos. I don't want the solution. Where in your conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships are you not even being nice to your partner? Whoever that partner is, is it you? Is it your marriage partner? Is it you in the universe? You're not even being nice or pleasant. You're demonstrating an absolute inability to hear someone else's perspective and you think it should all be around you. Where is their financial manipulation? Where it's like, no, my money's my money and your money's my money. Where is this showing up? We have got to get honest about this. This is killing lives and, and relationships out there. Now, the powerful transformation that is available here is first of all, of course, in the relationships and in the partnerships, but 
You may need to power struggle in your relationship, but if you will power struggle in the way where you're choosing to innovate and hear what that other partner is trying to say to you and breathe that content in, maybe this looks, and you can come to the other side and, and it doesn't make it easy. This is, this is challenging your ego. So this change of direction will be hard. And when you come to the other side, you're going to look at your partner, whether it's the universe, whether it's your marriage partner, whether it's yourself, and you're going to go, holy crap, we did it. We did it. Like this, this is our best life, right? This is our best life. What was has died off and we don't have to function like that anymore. So I'm telling you, if you are married and your marriage is struggling, I find that if you've been married long enough, maybe as a couple, you need counseling. But if you are not both doing counseling, that's really very challenging. But as a couple, it may be time for coaching. Half the time, Couples just don't know how to couple. Being married is a skill. So where is this where you're like, okay, maybe we have to power struggle, but we're going to power struggle through this together. And we need a coach to show us how to do this. We need to learn how to amend our relationship, right? You may need to step up and say, this is the kind of marriage, this is the kind of partnership that I want to have. And in doing that, setting a goal will actually be a transformative experience. Because if you say, I want us, I want our home to feel like safety and love and pleasure, everybody working towards that goal and asserting that this is the goal for this relationship. Because remember, in conscious chosen relationships, we chose each other for to meet a goal. So if you say this is the goal and everybody's asserting in that direction, this is powerfully transformative. Okay, eighth house friends, where are you being all kinds of obsessive? <laughs> jealous like and I, I giggle but I don't mean to because when we're talking about matters of intimacy that ugly green eyed monster of jealousy can just be disgusting and it is all encompassing it is permeating through us where it colors everything that we're seeing from my partner to my finances to myself to the outside world okay so where is there an obsessive thinking about the shared resources? This is, this is again where I'm going to ask, where is there financial manipulation? My money is my money and your money is my money. Now, this can also be not just with a physical human partner that you're treating or engaging that way, right? But also, where is this happening with loans, institutions, where it's like, no, I'm off track on my payment schedule, but I absolutely borrowed that money, so you absolutely deserve your money back. I don't get to go shopping if I owe you money. Where is this coming up? And you can see it in your books. You, you know that it's there. It's keeping you up at night. You're afraid of this debt, right? Where is there sexual manipulation? Oh, I just don't want to. So I'm not giving that to my partner. Where is this showing up, right? And if you're in a long-term committed space, this may be something to be looking into what's going on here and how do we get past it, but make no bones about it. It's a manipulation, right? It's a mine is mine and yours is mine kind of tactic. So where is this happening? Where is there a psychological power struggle that is continuing to happen where you feel like you're engaging with the darkness of yourself or another person or in the in the resources in collaboration maybe with other people where is there here there's a power struggle there's a dominance that is happening here in therapy in your healing work in your growing work and i would say even in your astrology where is there this intimate uh, dominance power struggle where you're standing and fighting to be right. I'm going to prove I'm right. And it's blocking the blessing of your healing. Death, debt, and taxes. Death, debt, and taxes. Let me just say it. Where are we, friends? Especially if you are in my over 40 club, where are you power struggling with death? That time has moved on. The 20s are not here. And it comes from a real place, right? Where is your power struggle with death? death and time moving on just in general. Now, the transformative piece that is available here is number one in the eighth house. I think of, um, first of all, the transformation can be to just get a hold of the shared resource. What is it? Is it sex? Is it money? Is it therapy? Is it conversation? Is it astrology? Is it in the eighth house we do reproductive things? So is it your hormones? Do you need to get that uterus, that prostate, prost, <laughs> prost, 
date. You can see I don't have one of those. Uh, checked out so that physically the organs themselves can be transformed in the way that is going to be healing to you as a whole. The joint finances, you know, is it a case and a time and a situation for you where your money has dried up? Your money has dried up. Like, where is it? And you're having to practice receiving in your joint finances. And this is killing that ego of I provide for me. I do this, right? It literally slips that carpet from underneath you. Or is it vice versa? Is there a partner and they're having a financial drama and you're needing to step in? And you know what I mean? Especially in certain dynamics where it's like, oh, my man's money has dried up. He's not making as much. He got lost from his job and he wasn't able to pick up another one. And I'm judging, 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 judging. But instead, there is this embracing of that chapter has died off. How can I pour into our joint resource, our joint intimate connection to help build this up, build us up so that we can win together, right? There's lots of transformation there. Okay. Ninth house, ninth house, bad behavior. (laughs) Where do you think you know everything? Where do you think you know everything? The know-it-all attitude is kicking your behind, right? There is this obsessive behavior with, I know, I know me, I know this, it is this way, there's no space around it. And what that creates is an energetic block, absolute block, right? And the idea sometimes, I want to just give you a very practical example, can be that even in a social situation, it doesn't seem as it doesn't seem as obvious, but in a social situation, you go in with a grouping of people or something like that, and you're leading with, well, I have my doctorate in. And that is the defense mechanism. That is the ego not saying, oh, I'm skilled and I'm trained in this particular thing, but it's I know everything because of this, right? It is leading with that manipulation tactic of that energy. Does higher education have you by the energy because you are convinced that if you don't know more, study more, have more, get those letters behind your name, you can't be anything in the world. Where is the ninth house vibration got you? Faith. Faith. Where where is your bad behavior and faith that you're saying, oh, I believe in this thing and you are not behaving, acting and demonstrating that you believe in that in any way, shape or form? Where is there an obsession or a fixation on belief structures, religious structures, ideologies, um, you're being very, very dogmatic about things, or you're using your intellectual power to manipulate other people. And this is, we can see it coming, right? I think uh, hopefully each of us have had the experience of doing it, having it done and doing it where someone starts throwing the intelligence and the logic at you to get around what's really going on. It's a manipulation tactic. So where is this showing up for you in terms of the bad behavior legally? Flat out, legally, what kind of bad behavior do you have legally? Are you supposed to be doing your 200 hours of community service? Or do you have a court date? Are you out on the road and you feel like I'm allowed to go 50 and a 30 because it's me? Right? Where is that pain point showing up and kind of kicking your butt? Now, the transformation here in the ninth house. And I will say, too, I think that some of you, the pain point, honestly, is in the education or in the training. You feel stuck. Again, I want to call to you immediately in your transformative energy, find the coach. If you're struggling to write that paper, if you're struggling to understand this course or have the energy to get done, talk to the academic advisor, bring in the tutor, uh, even a free resource who can can show you how to do that. Really research, do you need to be going to this particular college, university, training program to do what it is that you want to do? Don't let that hold you back. Now, the transformation comes with that, seeking the information, right? Doing an exploration of philosophy, doing an exploration of different ideas and philosophies around you, right? Realizing I'm afraid, I'm locked in here because if you would just walk out of fear, you just do that. But we got to get into some some tension, right? And maybe you're exploring by means of of listening to other perspectives first. Then it will grow in engagement to I can accurately debate, right? my transformation. I can accurately debate, not fight. I can assert my point of view, my philosophy without having to aggress it, feeling so threatened that if you don't believe like I believe and you don't believe that I'm right, we are going to fight, right? Um, Maybe even in your own transformation, you look around and you go, you know what, in terms of travel, um, 
I want to live someplace else. I want to have an experience someplace else. I want to move abroad. I don't want to move abroad. I want to move to a place where the ideologies of daily living and culture are more in alignment with mine, but you're asserting it instead of fighting with it. I think another great example before we move to the 10th house is like, I live in this particular country and it's all blah, 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 effed up. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And this isn't this and they're not doing me right. It's the difference between that and going, these are the things that are happening in my particular country. And I have found that there is a way for me to move to this country where the daily living structures and ideologies, maybe even faith, maybe even um, gender dynamics come at a different plane that I would like to live in. That's a very big transformation. Some of you will move. Some of you will hop country. You just will. Okay, 10,000. 10,000. We're almost there. So 10th house, obsession of work, obsession of my ambitions. Again, workaholism comes, but I feel like it comes like like this one people around you can feel. Like you can't say anything without it being about work, about money, about uh, your career, about your public reputation, right? There's just this obsessive, maybe sometimes even jealous, deeply jealous fear that is coming through, I'm not known enough right? Or I'm ruthless. I'm going to go tear other people's content or other people's work down in order for me to advance. Or I'm going to manipulate people into doing things for me so that my value increases, right? This obsessive drive for power, especially in the professional sphere. Now, the professional sphere doesn't just mean at work, okay? Because in the 10th house, it's also what we call you in public. Are you being that dominating grandma where you're like, you're not, you're not, you know, at, you're not being helpful. You're, I'm the only one who knows how to raise kids. I'm the only one who's ever raised children. You're doing it all wrong, which is not going to be supportive in your lineage at all, right? Is it that, are you the only volunteer at the organization who's ever volunteered, right? Like what is, what is it that the power structure in, in what, we know you as what we call you in public is inflamed. And where is there an engagement in manipulation tactics to get people to do what you want to do to advance you to advance your name to advance your reputation, even if you are not actively wielding it. And it doesn't always look nasty. It doesn't always look like war, especially in the 10th house, the most charming person in the world can be manipulating you we are using that as a manipulation tactic. We're just doing it with a smile. So where you got some bad behavior in this career place. Now, something else I do want to say is that Mars in Aquarius, I've seen this just throughout my practice is theft, right? I'm just, I'm stealing from work. Whether that is I'm clocking into my nine to five and I'm really only actually doing work things from like (laughs) two to five, right? Or I know I'm supposed to be working on this project and I am absolutely on Facebook or I'm driving that company car a few extra miles because, you know, I deserve this. Wherever that is showing up, get honest about that behavior. Now, the transformation here in this area too is truly the transformation of your identity in the professional Um, sphere, but you're asserting yourself, you're urging yourself to grow towards the career that you want to do, the title you want to hold in the world. I think it's very different than, you know, I'll use astrology. I want to be, I see a particular astrologer doing this and I want to have what they want to have. I want to be just like them. And it's the difference between that and being driven towards it and being focused and stealing content and doing these kinds of things and saying, well, now, wait a minute, I do this kind of astrology. I know today that my experience can help these kinds of people. So I'm going to grow the hell out of my lane. That's a very different place. And it's the process of Pluto, right? Where the pain makes you kind of come back home and grow in your own lane. But it also will likely involve a coach. If your business is not month to month profitable a year ahead, you need a business coach or to put it down. Pluto may bring this very much so to your attention. This is going to be a huge transformation to this professional life. It may also mean, too, that you 
in any confrontation you come into with authority figures, you know, is this about those taxes? Is it about those loans that you're going to be able to set up systems and structures that help you get in alignment, help you transform this area? Now, on the matters of, you know, being the best grandparent in the world, you may be learning here that you have to, the way that you did things might not be the only way to do things in raising children, dominating over the children, the family, the daycare, you're going to be learning to transform that and bringing a really positive transformation into holding your legacy position here in the 10th house. Okay. 11th house. Oh my, (laughs) it's the world. (laughs) It's just, it's just the world, the whole social world out in the world. Uh, Okay. In the 11th house, bad behavior could be showing up here is first of all, this obsession with social things. And you know, I'm going to say social media, the obsession with social media. And I just, it, I didn't get enough likes on that. This isn't getting, I right? The obsession with the likes, the obsession with the do it for the views, right? Like that is coming up. The obsession of the really honest, I'm going to bed at night. I'm trying to just take a shower and, and I'm so afraid of creating content because I'm creating it and I feel like I'm failing, failing, failing. Nobody's seeing what I'm seeing. Nobody's putting out my stuff. I feel like the industry that I want to work in is saturated. I feel like my friendship group is saturated and I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with what other people socially think of me. I'm feeling like I need to assert dominance and power struggle into my peer groups, right? I am, I'm being nasty with a friend or in my friendship groups, right? I'm trying to get things to be, um, my way, or I'm using tactics to gain influence here in the 11th house. This is the dark behaviors can also include, um, I'm exploiting my social connections, right? Oh, I'm tagging this person in this video, or I'm talking about people in public and name dropping so that I get the return on the investment so that people are looking at me. I'm joining this, um, this group, Not to join the group and be helpful. The tactic, the manipulation here is that not that I I, want to be helpful and be of service, but I want them to do something for me, right? And this is about manipulation at a social space for personal gain. We got to really be looking at what is the motive? What is the motive of what you're doing? But this manipulation, I'm, I'm leaving crappy comments under people's videos just to be mean and to be nasty. I'm saying things in my friendship group just to be nasty. I'm talking about my friend that's going through something behind their back right? I'm judging my friend as they're bringing something to me instead of discerning how I can help because it's my personal gain. I get, I feel better and try and lift me up by bringing you down, right? Now the transformation here is first of all, all things in in society and social social situations, because I do think another set of dark behavior that can show up when we're talking about social things is that I'm not saying what I actually believe is important to shape our society. Because for me, the personal gain is I don't have to deal with the kickback to that. But it also means that I'm not actively as an adult participating in shaping the society that I'm in. I'm still in a fear position. So the transformation is that in the space of society, the group dynamics, the friendships, all of these things, I'm going to assert my and say within the world, within the social sphere, here is who I am, here is what I believe, but also the me adds to the we. I'm showing up in this business group, in this you know, astrological group to be one of, but also to say, here's my strength, right? The gain is that we all gain by me bringing my unique special sauce, but I am holding my own. I am using discernment instead of judgment in situations. I am posting content, posting um, comments and things like that, that are about creating the transformation instead of just being nasty and making someone else feel bad so that I can feel good. There's going to be a great transformation to how you behave and show up in the collective that is very much so available in confrontation that I need to have or strong conversation with peers, social groups, you know, things like that. I'm going to be able to have that. And for some people, I do think, especially if it's strong in your 11th house, you may find that you are having harder conversations or 
you're making more content that feels a little bit darker, feels a little bit heavier, feels more confrontational. No, I actually believe this about this particular thing. And you may find yourself by the end of this having really held your own in that space. Okay, my 12th house, beautiful friends, the bad behavior here, obsession, manipulation, living in the space of delusion and fantasy and not wanting anybody to pull you out of it, right? So I'm being secretive now. I'm doing things behind the scenes. I am exerting control behind the scenes because I don't want to look bad, but I'm doing it behind the scenes. I'm engaging in an affair of some variety, whether the affair is with another person, I'm taking money out of the expense box, I'm using a little bit of extra drugs, um, do you know, whatever it is I'm doing behind the scenes, and I've got this power dynamic, I'm operating behind the scenes in some manipulative um, and dark tendency kind of way. Addictive behaviors could be absolutely on the rise in the 12th house because this is going to be a pain point. I want to escape through the 12th house. Now I can escape with drugs, alcohol, food, shopping, uh, sex. I can pick an escape thing, but I can just as easily do it with, I'm just only going to do yoga. I'm going to sit in meditation all day and, and believe that I'm just going to adjust my vibration so much that I don't actually have to go out in the world and to create these escape things are going to show up. Now, the 12th house, I also think is the space of the inner demons, the things that will be our own undoing, you know, those skeletons in the closet. So if I'm trying to push everybody and everything back in the closet, I don't want people to know this about me. I don't want them to see this. I don't want to see that. I don't want to go back there and handle that. That is going to create fear, which is going to absolutely give way to the bridge breaking open of an escape behavior. I don't want to deal with that thing that happened when I was five. I'm going to drink. I don't want to deal with my mother. She's such, Bleh! I'm going to eat, right? Whatever it is. And for some people, it's literally the, the, the dark behavior is I am in hiding. <laughs> I've done something and now I'm on the, I'm on the lamb, right? <laughs> so whatever that looks like, the pain point is pretty real, pretty dark, pretty nasty, right? I want somebody to love me for myself. I want my own love in my life, but I can't have it. So if I can't have my own husband, I'll have yours, right? So what is this behavior? Now, the 12th house transformation is one of the ones I think is so profound because it is a spiritual awareness awakening of a sorts, right? Is that the introspection having to get into the sub and the unconscious spaces gives this relief, that closet gets cleaned out, you're not living in fear, the transformation of that. But it is also a thing like every other house we've talked about, you got to get a guide to take you there, right? Whether it's a therapist, whether it's that 12 step group, whether it is whatever, you know, I always say when it comes to an affair, right? Because this is a great place to use it as a training program, I think. Uh, when it comes to affairs, or it comes to using someone else's money, just ask the owner of that thing if you can engage with it, right? If you're having an affair, ask that person's spouse if it's okay for you to be with them. And if they say yes, there you go. If you're using someone else's money and they don't know about it, ask them if you can use their money. And if they say, yeah, you know, you can sleep with my husband and use my money, then you are good to go. And this is a pathway to freedom. However, if not, or if those things won't be done, looking at where the wound is, the pain point that is creating that and having a guide go with you so that you're not having to carry that whole load by yourself, but you're learning to untangle it. This is the transformation. Transformative experiences also come from the 12th house, right? Like I'm doing something behind the scenes and I get found out, you know, the shine, the little light on you. And I find something about me is found out in this area. And then I'm forced to confront this, but I get to assert my desire. I get to assert my energy to move forward past this hidden part of my life, this hidden part of my psyche. And the transformative that is here is the release and the freedom from the deep fears, the envelopment of an absolutely deep forgiveness and self-love is the, the benefit is the transformative benefit of this Mars-Pluto energy. So I just want you to know that whatever it is out there that you are grappling with, first of all, it's okay. 
it is okay. It is a part of the human experience. Okay. The pain point is telling you exactly who to ask for help. It is going to be the assertive courage to ask for help. We still have so many astrological aspects that are helping you, that are the helpers along the journey for you to live in flow and do this particularly challenging work. But I'm sure as we're here, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, the inflammation of this area is feeling really very real. So I love you guys a lot. Let me know. Let me know in the comment section down below what is the truth of where you're struggling? What house is this in for you? And where are you struggling with it? Ready to bring in that transformation. So also in the uh, comment section down below, leave hashtag transformation, okay? All right, beautiful friends. I love you. If you haven't checked out the Pluto playlist, make sure you check it out. Bye.